What is up guys, Eric Thane here, and you're probably asking yourself right now, Eric, what are you doing sitting in a room in the dark, all by yourself, with nobody else around? And the answer is, I don't know. What are you doing watching me sitting in a room in the dark with nobody else around? <laughs> all right, so, hey Siri, turn on the key light. <clears throat> there we go. Um, I just realized that all of you guys that are watching right now that have uh, Apple devices are uh, probably really mad at me right now. <laughs> uh, but that's too bad. I'm not editing that out. All right, so today we're talking about how to break the rules of cinematography. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so how to break the rules of cinematography. As we all know, as filmmakers, there are rules to cinematography. There are principles, there are guidelines that we follow in order to create cinematic images. And the reality is that once you've learned those rules, it is possible to break them as well. In fact, it becomes a very important part of filmmaking. And so today we're gonna to talk about when you do that, how do you break the rules of cinematography and how do you make that happen? In fact, I had a conversation the other day with uh, one of you guys on Instagram. It was a really interesting conversation. Um, one of you guys was asking, Eric, like, why does your why do your Instagram videos look like this? They look like a little bit hazy or a little bit soft or a little bit you know, different than like this typical standard videos that I'm used to seeing online. And my answer was basically, well, the reality is because I like it because that's how I like to shoot things. It's the way I like to make things look. I typically like to shoot in a more painterly kind of uh, not as clean and clinical style of cinematography. And it's just the style that I've developed over time. And yes, it does require me to break some of the rules of cinematography, but it's uh, they're intentional decisions that I've made over time as I've developed my own style of cinematography. So if you're a beginner filmmaker and you're learning cinematography or you're more advanced and you're trying to develop your own style, um, this video is gonna be for you as far as how, to, how do you go about breaking the rules of cinematography. So first things first, number one is that first you have to learn the rules. You can't break the rules until you know the rules. I think it's a big mistake that a lot of filmmakers make is trying to go out and be creative and artistic and unique with their work and do something different, but without understanding the fundamentals and without having perfected, not even perfected, but gotten pretty good at and proficient at the fundamentals, the principles of cinematography and getting them right first. It's like, it's like you can't learn how to do something your own way until you've learned how to do it the normal way, to do it the right way. And the same is true with cinematography. I think it's really important to learn the rules of cinematography. Like go out and learn the principles, learn what you're supposed to do. Like shoot at 24 frames per second, put your shutter speed at 1 48th of a second, always reverse key your lighting. All of these rules, like learn how to do them all the time and consistently every single time and always get them right. Make your images perfectly sharp. Make sure you're eliminating all noise. You're getting your uh, ISO at just the right level. Make sure that everything is perfectly in focus every single time. Like that is how you're gonna start out learning as a filmmaker and you're actually gonna learn a lot faster if you learn that stuff first and become very proficient at it. Like when I was starting out as a filmmaker, I, I remember learning those rules. I remember when a friend told me like, oh, we're supposed to shoot at 24 frames per second. I was like, I had no idea that was even a rule. And so I started doing that. And they're like, oh, there's this thing called reverse key lighting, right? You're supposed to light it this way. I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I started learning those rules and I got to the point where my work looked really, really good. And it had a very cinematic look to it. It was very clinical. It was very technical. It was, it was uh, you know, I was adding sharpness in post and trying to get it just right. I was always denoising my footage in Premiere Pro. I was always doing all that stuff to make it look perfect and look right on. And I think that was a really important first stepping stone for me as a filmmaker. And it is for most filmmakers is learning that. And so first things first, make sure you learn the rules of cinematography before you try to start breaking them. You got to learn how to walk before you can start dancing, right? And if you're learning dance, you got to learn the basics of dance before you start throwing in your own style and your own creative aspect to it. So first things first, learn the rules. Now, if you're a filmmaker who's just starting out and you're trying to learn those rules, or even if you're a filmmaker who's more advanced and you already kind of understand the rules, but you're really trying to get a look that looks more cinematic and start developing your own style as a filmmaker, uh, I wanna let you know about something that we just launched today, 
which is the end of summer Go Cinematic Bundle. What it is real quick is we've basically taken all of our best courses on cinematography, editing, lighting, the principles of cinematography, the business of cinematography, like everything you need to know to be a really high level cinematographer and to make good money as a filmmaker, we've bundled them all together into one package for you guys. And that is the Go Cinematic Bundle, which is going live today. It's gonna be available for about a week, so definitely go check it out. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. And by the way, I don't do sponsorships or any advertising on this channel. I don't really like the idea of somebody else telling me what I have to say on here. So the only way that I fund these videos is by you buying my courses, and they are some of the best courses in the world, if I do say so myself. So definitely check them out, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so if number one is to first learn the rules of cinematography, then number two is now to realize that everything doesn't have to be perfect. Like I was talking about with my work, um, I, I've developed this style of cinematography, and I've been inspired by some amazing cinematographers that are far better than me. Um, who have this style where they don't really make everything perfect. They like to make things dark, or they like to smudge up the lens, or they like to uh, create uh, a lot of haze in the image. That, that sometimes like the, uh, the image isn't quite sharp. It's maybe slightly out of focus. Sometimes, the, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of noise or a little bit of grain in the shot. And, and the thing is, my approach to cinematography is that I just don't think that everything has to be perfect all the time. I think when you try to make things perfect, which like I said, when you're just starting out, it's good to learn how to do that. But ultimately, if you really wanna develop a style as a filmmaker, when you just make things perfect, it tends to lose its natural humanistic feel to it. I want the work to feel painterly. I want it to feel artistic. I want it to feel like there's a human behind the camera and it's not just this robotic computer capturing images. And so when it's too perfect, it starts to feel clinical. It starts to feel too clean. And, and I honestly don't like that. And the reality is if you go to the movies and you watch a movie, like have any of you ever seen a movie that had a really grainy or really noisy shot? Probably, right? When you go to the theaters, you can see it because it's up on the big screen. Or have you ever seen a shot that like was a little bit out of focus? Yeah, it happens too. And, and I think a lot of filmmakers get so hung up on trying to make things perfect, they don't realize that some of the best movies in the world are not perfect and never will be perfect. And the goal really isn't to make it perfect. So for me as a filmmaker, I think it's okay for a shot to kind of go in and out of focus a little bit. I think it's okay for there to be a lot of grain or noise in a shot if you shot it in really low light. I mean, there's certain levels where you don't want it to be too much, but sometimes, you know, throwing denoisers on things can actually make it worse and make it look more robotic and computerized and if you would have just left the noise on it and let it just kind of feel natural. A really good example of this is actually the movie The Batman, which I did a breakdown of a few weeks ago. So if you missed that, definitely check it out on my channel. Um, one of the things I love about that movie, which was shot by Greg Frazier, who's one of the best DPs in the world right now, is that they didn't make it perfect. It's, it's a really good example of smudging up the lens. I think he put uh, Vaseline on a filter in front of the lens and like actually mess things up so that you get all these artifacts and these, this bokeh that's just amazing. And a lot of the shots just really aren't perfect. It's just a very, it has a very human feel, very raw, natural feel to the cinematography. And I thought that was really cool. And so if you haven't seen that movie yet, definitely check it out. Some of the best cinematography I think that has ever been done in history. Personally, that is my opinion but definitely check that movie out because it's a good example of this principle. So once you've learned the rules of cinematography and you know them and you know how to make things perfect and sharp and clinical and awesome, then at that point, now it's like, realize that it's okay to let things breathe a little bit. It's okay to let them be less than perfect. And in a lot of cases, I think it's actually better. Okay, so number three is that when it comes down to it, it's all about the story, okay? Everything that you do as a filmmaker whether you're breaking rules or you're changing things or you're developing your own style really comes down to and, and works in service of the story. And this is what's called motivation. Motivation is the idea of really thinking about your story and creating your camera settings and your composition and your lighting and your audio and everything that you do in camera as a filmmaker, you're doing it for the purpose of the story. It's not just doing it for the sake of making it look cool, but it's actually for the purpose of the story. So you'll see movies that, you know, for example, the camera will jump from one side of the 180 degree line, it'll jump to the other side of the 180 degree line, and, which is normally a no-no, right? It's like, you can't do that. That's the rule of cinematography. Always stay on one side of the 180 degree line. But in this case, you'll see them do that because 
it creates this jarring effect, right? Where they want you to feel weird, where something happened or something's off about the conversation that two characters are having. And so it's actually done intentionally to create that emotion, to create that feel. Another example is maybe you'll see people using a different shutter speed in their work. So we all know as filmmakers, we're supposed to shoot at 24 frames per second and we're supposed to shoot at 1 48th of a second. But maybe if you were shooting like a dream sequence, you might lower that shutter speed a little bit to get a little bit more motion blur in the shot. And what that's gonna do is gonna make it feel more dreamy and more ethereal, whereas you know the regular shutter speed is just gonna make it feel normal. Or on the flip side, you might use a higher shutter speed like 1 60th or 1 1 20th in order to create a really like sharp, gritty effect. Let's say you're shooting like action scenes where people are fighting or something like that. It's a very common thing you'll see in movies where they actually use a higher shutter speed. In war movies, that's very common. In fact, a lot of people call it the Saving Private Ryan effect because it was so heavily used in that movie. It makes it feel more gritty and raw and uh, sharper. Uh, which is a different effect and has that emotion and evokes a different emotion. Or maybe in some cases you even want to shoot at a different frame rate, right? Other than 24 frames per second. So for example, Peter Jackson in The Hobbit, he shot that at 48 frames per second, which was a very controversial thing in the film industry. A lot of people liked it, a lot of people didn't like it. Personally, I don't know how I felt about it. It felt a little bit weird. It kind of felt like you were watching like a news broadcast <laughs> looking at The Hobbit, but you can't refute the fact that Peter Jackson used that as a stylistic choice in order to tell his story. He wanted to create this world where when you were watching this movie, it looked like you were looking through a window into the world, like you were there in the world with them, rather than having that fourth wall that's in front of you between you and the scene. And so regardless of whether you like it or not, it's still a stylistic choice that Peter Jackson made in order to tell the story that he wanted to tell. And I think that that's what it all really comes down to, is you as a filmmaker get to develop your own style. You get to develop your own rules and decide how you want to tell the stories that you want to tell. At the end of the day, nobody can tell you what is right and what is wrong because it's an art form, right? There's no objective truths. It's just a subjective art form that can be created the way that you want it to be created. So as you're developing your skills as a filmmaker and as you're learning the rules and the principles of cinematography, don't forget to think about your own specific style, the way you like to do things, the way you like to see things, the types of movies that you like to watch, and figure out how to model those things and mimic the way that they're doing it, and you'll develop your own style eventually over time. All right, so I hope you guys liked this video and it was helpful for you on your cinematography journey. Once again, let me just mention that if you are a filmmaker and you're learning to get that cinematic look or you're more advanced, you already got it and you're trying to just make it even better, don't forget to check out the end of summer Go Cinematic Bundle, which again is only happening for one week. The link is down in the description below. We've got all of our best courses on cinematography, editing, lighting, camera settings, business, the principles of cinematography, everything that you need to be an expert cinematographer. We've got some of the top courses in the entire world world and we're bundling them together for one insanely low price. I think it's like $5,000 worth of courses for like just a few hundred bucks. So once again, go ahead and check it out. I'll link to it down below. If you're watching this video from today through the next seven days, then check it out. If you're watching the video later, then of course it'll be gone, but you know, stay tuned and maybe we'll have something else coming up in the near future. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will see you guys next week on the next one.